Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 16th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check it out. We've got another system moving across Vancouver Island with some cold air aloft, thunderstorm potential with that. We've got multiple systems that continue to roll through portions of Oregon. We'll take a look at that in some detail. We've got this complex trough right off the coastline, and you can see the system spinning up here. It's going to keep that precipitation going, and I know some places are actively flooding right now. So we'll take a detailed look at that. We'll look at the extended forecast. As always, as we go through the video here this morning, taking a look at right now, you can see a, a bit of that precipitation starting to lighten up there for Eugene. But again, there's another swath of some rainfall and some mountain snow rolling in. And we got showers north of that here across some of western Washington as well. Got some light drizzle in Spokane. If we take a look down here towards Burns, you got 40 degrees right now. And you can see it's a bit blustery out there, a bit blustery for Boise. It's also windy along some of the Oregon coast as well, uh, or it has been this morning. Let's take a look down here if we go up the north. Northern California coast, Crescent City, gusting 48 knots last hour. So, yeah, interesting stuff. And you see Medford right now actually currently getting some heavy rainfall. And if we take a look here, so this is the parent temperature. And if you take a look at this, 1530 Zulu time, right now we are minus 7. So you just take 7 away from that. That would be about 830 here um, here for the Pacific Northwest. And, again, that's about 9 o'clock showing right there. So it did update. But you can see this is the parent temperature. It does take into account the wind chill factor across the region. You can see the higher terrain, of course, pretty chilly. But look at Seattle. I mean, 35 degrees. We're here into mid-March, and it is still quite chilly. As you saw, that complex trough still bringing some dynamic weather into the region so yeah we are on the cool side of things here for the pacific northwest and here it is you guys can see exactly what i'm doing in this video and again uh, you would take a seven and subtract it from that uh when before we moved into the daylight savings time or however the daylight standard time or whatever i'm not sure how that goes but you would be looking at minus eight right now we are minus seven so it is 9 30 as i'm doing this video right now <clears throat> Winter storm warnings wrapping up today, but we do have thunderstorm potential and some showers still ongoing. Beach has your statements for some of the coastal areas. And you can see the flood potential here. National Weather Service Portland. <clears throat> talking about this a little bit you can see Corvallis here is in that flood watch right now we do have some flood advisories ongoing and some flood warnings ongoing as well and you can kind of see that across portions of Medford National Weather Service and if we take a look there you can actually give your reports into the National Weather Service here and you can kind of imagine if you, your local road looks like that we would, might want to send that in they can get the word out to people and they can put out flood warnings and advisories and whatnot and so this page here you'd have to go to that if you want to really uh, maybe I'll put that in the link below in the description down below for today's video but you would go in here and you select a report type and you go next and it'll ask for um, uh, different things like it'll pinpoint your address and use gps and things like that so go ahead and do that if you want to enter storm port reports now let's see if i can get out of this page here as well so day one excessive rainfall outlook you can see northern california southwest oregon i wouldn't i was a little bit surprised there was not a slight out for this but yeah there's a lot of rainfall still incoming here and you can see the mesoscale precipitation discussion they are paying attention this was a bit earlier there uh, through the day um this is for uh, actually no this goes uh, issued at this is issued no this is issued about five hours ago here so we've got the atmospheric river and this continues to bring the flood potential another two to five inches as we go through the day today so be very careful out there and probably not the best day to be traveling around especially in the canyons and the valley areas and yeah the heavy rain does continue and watch out for that flooding out there so yeah we are paying attention to that this is today's thunderstorm alec does include seattle doesn't include portland there but that doesn't mean you can't hear a clap of thunder down towards a northwest oregon medford it does include it a little bit there also and this is day two more of the oregon coast here medford included boise also some of eastern oregon as well and this is spokane as you can imagine cool and wet light rain and snow this morning eastern washington and idaho panhandle highs in the 40s to 50s maybe an afternoon sun break if you're really lucky. <clears throat> So let's take a look here across the northern Pacific Ocean, and uh, you can kind of see the jet stream has been pointed at us. You see the troughing going on as we go through the day Monday, and then we get a little bit of a transient ridge here. Next storm system swings through as we go through Wednesday night. Another storm system after that. The jet stream remains fairly active, but we do get some type of ridging developing as we go through the 23rd, 24th. How much of the precipitation will be getting down towards Washington, Oregon is a good question, but then we bring another storm system in there through the extended forecast, and something funny on this uh, last night's European artificial intelligence we start to get that northwest flow in some chillier conditions as we go towards the end of the month but take that with a grain of salt right now
And if we take a look at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, there goes our trough transient ridge system comes through next week. And then we get another one towards the weekend. And then maybe we will dry out. <clears throat> Excuse me, still getting over a cold. Bear with me, please. Now, taking a look, you can see that ridging there. Maybe through next weekend. Who knows? If, if things line up just right, maybe we'll get a nice weekend out of it. But then you can see the models continue to want to bring systems in here as we go off the, through the end of the month. Shown there. Look at that trough off into fantasy land there on the artificial intelligence and precipitation. And again, this is what's coming in today for Southern Oregon. You can see the low kind of riding that Bear Clinic boundary, keep the precipitation going all the way on in through the day tomorrow. A little bit of a break here as we go through Tuesday and probably Wednesday, another fairly strong frontal system bringing some gusty, gusty conditions out over the coastal areas. And then you can see no rest for the weary as we go towards the following weekend. Are we gonna get some ridging, finally dry us out? Or are we gonna keep this precipitation here? That's not a great look. That's kind of a dirty ridge here for Washington. A lot of Precipitation still up into Vancouver Island and western BC. Atmospheric river look to that one. So yeah, we look to remain active and then that system kicks through towards the end of the month. Boy, what a lot of storms we're going to be dealing with it looks like. So taking a look at what we will look like on the day today this is what the doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours or so so here we are about eight o'clock this morning 9 10 11 i mean but look at this plume of moisture corvallis south through eugene roseburg down to medford coastal regions as well mountain snows continuing for the oregon cascades and we go through tonight we start to finally get a break as we go through this evening but still some showers around and some rainfall around and if you missed that here, there are some showers moving across some of western Washington. Kind of an interesting looking uh, Olympic mountain velocity shear zone setting up here as well. Kind of a boundary hanging out across some of the Kitsap Peninsula, maybe, you know, Hood Canal there. And then moving across as a, a little bit of a convergence zone as we go through tonight. And then as we go through the day tomorrow as well, we have some additional thunderstorm potential also here for western Washington. Showers continue. Some mountain snows flying all the way on in through the day Tuesday. But we're starting to get a break at least from the heavier precipitation now 80 meter wind speed what is the olympic mountain velocity shear zone well it's when you bring these winds through the shahalo scout there's a terrain a kind of a, a feature here that's obviously lower than the olympic mountains we put that into motion as we go through this afternoon you can kind of see the accelerated winds here across some of the kitsap peninsula and then you see the winds coming out of the northwest there on that boundary there you can get some added rotation in the atmosphere i've known to been known to see funnel clouds in there that's actually what helped develop that ef2 tornado there for gig harbor back in 2018 so uh, that's not i'm not saying that's what's going to happen today here but that could be enhancing some of the shower activity here and i just thought i'd show you an example of the olympic mountain velocity shear zone we're not looking for ef2 tornadoes or anything like that but i wouldn't be surprised to see funnel clouds when you get this setting up sometimes if you're really paying attention <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me if you're really paying attention out there you can sometimes uh, catch those features and again if we go through the day today kind of scrolled in there you can kind of see that coming down towards hood canal and some of the northern portions the kitsap peninsula and then maybe moving across everett there uh, kind of some heavier precipitation showing up at times maybe some small hail with that maybe a lightning strike or two as well and some of these showers just rolling through as we go through the day on monday another convergent zone looking feature there between seattle and everett as well so if we look at surface base cape this is the high resolution rapid reef it's just going to show you that things are destabilizing as we go through the day here today now lightning flash density potential the european is is somewhat on board here it does show some lightning potential here across western washington mainly some of british columbia as well with some of that showery activity and then we go through the day monday and one more time you see that pop up there for some of eastern oregon western washington maybe even down towards portland there as well we'll take a look at that again here tomorrow uh, now a positive snow depth change in inches on the european again you can see the snow that's flying across the cascades of oregon here today and i wouldn't worry about snow to the lower elevations but you might see some small hail some snow pellets bouncing around things with some of these showers and it kind of shows something interesting up towards Marysville where it's showing kind of an increased amount of some of that wintry precipitation there, maybe back across some of the higher hills as well. But, I, you know, and we're not expecting snowfall down you know, towards sea level for the cement areas, no doubt. 
Now, accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts, no major windstorm coming, but the system on Wednesday, you can see it bump up the wind speeds out over the coastal areas here. So of course, they're much more used to this wind out on the coast versus places inland across the Willamette Valley and the Puget Sound. But some gusty winds could be bringing, uh, coming in here on the day Wednesday. So we will be watching that system. It doesn't look like any kind of inland big windstorm or anything of that nature. Uh, 15 day <clears throat> precipitation anomaly. This is the European artificial intelligence. And this, and there's no scrolling on this. This is just a 15 day precipitation anomaly. Clearly, you can see the storm track pointed back at us. And I showed this one yesterday. The one we showed yesterday was a troughing. This is a 30 day running average of the 500 millibar heights. And you can see the troughing that was hanging out. It's backed off on today's run here. This is the control run. So it will tend to vary more than the ensembles, but it definitely showing something better for spring weather lovers here as we go through the month of April versus what was being shown yesterday. Uh, the ensembles also showed a little bit of troughing, but nothing too extreme. Now, 6 to 10 day, you can see the below normal. There's the above bullseye. This was put out yesterday, and the you know, above normal signal kind of creeping up the west coast a bit there towards the end of the month. And the 8 to 14 day as well, still with the above average. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.